Today I'm going to break down the <clears throat> breakdown. Today I'm going to break down the difference between the Cali Audio WS 6.2 subwoofer and the Yamaha HS8 subwoofer. Now both of these retail for $499 and they're considered Pro Audio subwoofers, so they are really just head to head in the marketplace. And with this video, what I hope to do is to show you the difference so you can understand which one makes more sense for you to buy. We'll breeze through some of these specs while I show you a couple little clips in video to show the comparison of the two in size. The Yamaha features a single eight inch woofer. Total power is rated at 150 watts. Their spec frequency range is 22 to 150 hertz. It features two XLR and two quarter inch inputs and two XLR outputs. Weight is approximately 28 pounds. The Cali features two six and a half inch woofers with an RMS rating of about 400 watts. Stated frequency range is about 31 hertz to about 180 hertz, plus or minus 3D by the manufacturer. This subwoofer features two XLR quarter inch combo jacks for the input and two XLR outputs as well as RCA inputs and weighs about 35 pounds. Now you can see there are two woofers on the Cali on each side. But on the Yamaha, there's a single eight inch woofer underneath. Both of these subwoofers are front ported. So you will have to keep that in mind when it comes to placement. You can see in the video that the Cali is a little bit taller, but more narrow. So it does take up more vertical space, but less floor space. Now I can talk about how I heard these subwoofers and use fancy buzzwords like tight or punchy or dynamic, or I don't know any of those other words, but frankly, I would rather show you hard data so you can actually see the frequency response and the SPL capabilities of each of these subwoofers. So with that said, let's look at the frequency response of the Yamaha first. What I'm providing here is the Yamaha at three different outputs, around 65 decibels, around 85 decibels, and then the maximum output capability here in red. When I'm showing you these, these are one meter distance reference to anechoics. The first thing we're going to look at is the negative three dB point. Now, if I draw the average line through here at about 65 decibels and then up here at about 85 decibels, I'm going to chart this and look for the negative three dB point relative to those levels. Negative three dB appears to be about 37, 36 Hertz, give or take. Now at the maximum output volume, we can see that the response has changed a pretty good bit, notably, on the lower end. So this shape right here of the roll off is different than the shape of the roll off at the lower output volumes. And that just gives us an idea that the Yamaha is using some kind of limiter built in to protect the subwoofer. So you don't run into significant compression or distortion. It's also worth noting that at the highest output volume, there's about a two decibel bump centered around 70 Hertz. So that may give you a little bit more punch at that particular frequency than if you are mixing or listening to this subwoofer at a lower volume, such as this 85 decibel volume. Now, if we wanna find what the F10 is, we kinda of do the same thing. We say 85 decibels for the median volume, and then we say, all right, well, where is it 10 decibels down? So that would be 75 decibels, which is right around here, and that's about 29 hertz. So F10 of 29, F3 of about 37 hertz for the Yamaha. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the Cali. And the Cali, you may notice off the bat, look how much more extended the response is. I mean, it goes flat. I'm only measured up to 400 hertz, so it's possible that it extends out further than that. I basically bypassed all the switches on both subwoofers, and this is the Cali's natural response. At around 65, which actually is closer to about 66 or so decibels, I want to find the negative 3 dB point, so I'm going to say 66 minus 3 is going to be 63. So I'm going to go find 63 decibels, and that's right around here. That's about 31 to 32 hertz. 10 decibels down is going to be 66 minus 10, 56. So that's going to be about 27 or so hertz for the lower volume. Now, the same thing kind of seems to be true within reason for the median volume. But as we turn the volume up, we see the same thing that we saw for the Yamaha, where there is compression and a changing of the frequency response at the maximum output. Now, really what this just means is that if you have to put this subwoofer really far away or you're just listening to it at deafening levels, you're not gonna have the same sonic characteristic at lower volume 
versus higher volume. And that's true with pretty much every subwoofer that I've ever tested. They have some sort of limiter or compression algorithm built in to protect the subwoofer driver. And it's just important to understand what kind of protection is involved and how it alters the frequency response. And with this, then you can guess that you've got more upper mid bass punch at the highest output compared to the lower outputs where it's more linear down to about 30 Hertz or so for the Cali. Now what I wanna do is compare the Yamaha to the Cali directly. And the Cali is gonna be in this solid line. The Yamaha is in this dashed blue line. And this is my median output volume. So this is around 85 decibels, again, give or take. And what we see is a pretty significant difference on the low end of the Yamaha, as well as the upper end of the Yamaha. Whereas the Cali seems to extend quite a bit further. If you're looking at, let's say 30 Hertz, there's about 76 to about 85. So there's about eight to nine decibels of additional output for the Cali at the median output volume. And then if we go to 20 Hertz, we can see that gap closes a little bit more. There's about three to four decibels, maybe even five decibels. So it's not quite as much as it is in this lower mid bass region, but it's still a good bit more. Now let's compare the maximum output volume of the two. Yamaha again is in the dashed line and it's red and the maximum for the Cali is in the solid red line. The Cali definitely has more output volume. Uh, let's see, 75 to about, that's about eight decibels at 20 Hertz. And then if we go to 30 Hertz, you're at about 86, 87 to about 96 or so. So you're almost about 10 decibels at 30 Hertz. It starts to close through this 40 to 50, 60, 70 Hertz region, but then the Cali has significantly more output in the upper mid bass region, as you can see here, which basically just tells us that the Cali has more output capability. It has a higher dynamic range. If you're listening at lower volumes and you really wanna have some solid kick drum come in, the Cali is gonna have a little bit more dynamic range and we can see that at around 50 Hertz. Now, if you have low bass notes, the Cali is gonna have as much as 10 decibels dynamic range at around 20 Hertz compared to the Yamaha. So in terms of maximum SPL and as well as linearity, the Cali wins out. But let's see what happens when we talk about group delay. Group delay is a metric I like to look at for two things. Number one is how much internal delay does the DSP add? So this measurement is referenced to one meter. So you could take off about three milliseconds. If you look here, the black is Cali, blue is Yamaha. The black is at around, at 80 Hertz, it's around eight milliseconds or so. So if you take off three milliseconds for the delay from the subwoofer to the microphone that's measuring it, then the internal delay is around five milliseconds for the Cali and it's around seven to eight milliseconds for the Yamaha. The other thing I like to look at is what the group delay is doing near the crossover region because a more abrupt change to the crossover region is gonna be harder to align to your main speakers when you're talking about phase and time alignment. So both of these have a pretty similar trend in the group delay, so there's not an abrupt change on either one of them. The difference that I'm seeing in the measurements though in this case is the Cali has a higher group delay as you go below 40 Hertz. Now that may be because they're adding in additional DSP. I'm not necessarily sure of what's causing that increased group delay. Are you gonna hear it? So in my experience, probably not. The main thing that I care about group delay for is just in that crossover region and both of them are pretty much doing the same thing. Finally, I wanna look at distortion. We're gonna look at the total harmonic distortion. We're gonna look at the second harmonic distortion and the third order harmonic distortion. For this graphic, I've overlaid all of those. And in every case, the Yamaha is gonna be the dashed line. So let's start off with total harmonic distortion, which is in red. Cali is in solid line and it's way down here. And the Yamaha is the dashed line and it's way up here. Now, if we go and look at 20 Hertz, the Cali's at about 10% distortion at this particular output level, which is around 85, 86 decibels. The Yamaha is 45% THD at 20 Hertz. So there's about 35% THD difference between the two at 20 Hertz at a nominal, nominal, nominal output level of around 85 decibels at one meter. The second harmonics kind of follow the same trend. The Cali is down here at around 4%. The Yamaha is up at around 32% at 20 Hertz. The third order harmonic in black Cali is at around 7% and Yamaha is at around 32%. So in both cases, the Yamaha is significantly higher in distortion products at 20 Hertz. 
And it starts to close the gap when you get down to 30 hertz. If you care about total harmonic distortion, then this gives you an idea of how far ahead the Kali is versus the Yamaha. I almost forgot to show the CEA results from these two subwoofers. So what I've got on my screen is a table that has the results from that testing. And you can see that the Yamaha and the Kali are down here at the bottom. But I've also included two additional subwoofers, the JL Audio Dominion D108, which uses a single eight inch subwoofer, and then the SVS 3000 Micro, which uses two eight inch subwoofers. I've got the results in tabular format, but I generally like to look at it in graphical form. So let's switch over to that. JL is in blue, SVS is in red, Yamaha is in yellow, and Kali is in black. We're gonna start at 20 Hertz. I don't have results for the Yamaha or the Kali because both of them failed that test at that frequency. So we're gonna go up to 25 Hertz, and then that's where I have results for the Kali. Now the Kali comes out swinging at about 97 decibels at 25 Hertz, compared to the next closest one at 86, which is the JL Audio Dominion D108. The Kali is 10 decibels above the second closest one at 25 Hertz. Yamaha still doesn't have results that pass my testing at 25 Hertz. Now, if we go to 31 Hertz, now we have a pass for the Yamaha and it's close to the JL Audio, both around 90, 91 decibels or so. But the Kali again, wins out at 102.5 decibels. So the Kali is about 10 to 11 decibels higher than the next closest one out of these four. Now, what happens as you go higher in frequency is the other subwoofers start to pick up in that mid bass region. So they have more output capability that's less hindered by distortion, but even still, it's not quite significant. You're about, what, 105 for the Yamaha. The Yamaha is holding its own at 50 Hertz and then 103 for the JL and then the Cali is 102. So like I said, you're about three decibels or so off. And then we kind of pick back up, the Cali wins out again here. In terms of just the CEA results, I'm really surprised by how well the Cali does. Now the Cali is maybe almost twice the volume of the JL or the SVS, but for it to have 10 decibels more output at 25 and 31 Hertz, that's significant. What does that mean to you? Well, that just means that you have higher dynamic range capability at those lower frequencies with the Kali compared to the other three subwoofers that I'm showing in the graphic. At 20 Hertz, is that gonna be an issue for you? I don't know. You know, you've seen the frequency response and does have response down that low. It just doesn't have a passing CEA result. You're still gonna hear 20 Hertz, but it's not gonna be as clean as it is with something like the JL or maybe even the SVS. Now, after showing you all that data, what I want to tell you is that when I was listening to both of these subwoofers and comparing them back to back, what I noticed was that the Yamaha just didn't get as low as the Cali. Now you understand why. The other thing that I noticed is that the Cali had a lot more output at higher volume. Well, now you understand why. If you're mixing and you're playing around with music or maybe even watching a movie with these subwoofers, the Cali wins out because it gets lower and in some cases has as much as 10 decibels more down at 20 Hertz and even 30 Hertz at the maximum SPL. The compression or limiter for both of them do what they're supposed to do and they limit the SPL, but the Cali still has more output capability. The Cali also has significantly lower distortion. Now the Cali does have higher group delay, but it's in an area where I'm not too concerned about group delay. So that's just a personal thing. If you feel like group delay is a problem at 40 Hertz, now you've seen the data and you know what to get. My final recommendation based on the data and based on my subjective listening is that the Cali wins out. They're the exact same price. I'd say get the Cali. If you're interested in either one of these subwoofers, please consider using one of my affiliate links below. It doesn't cost you anything additional, but it does help this channel with a small commission. Conversely, if you want to help support this channel in another way, you can do so by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner. That does it for this review. If you like it, please remember to give me a thumbs up because that helps me with YouTube's algorithm. I will talk to you all later. Take care.